Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. Once again, I'm on George Street. It's uh, very early, it's 5.30 and I'm waiting for the light rail to arrive. I can just see it in the distance there, slowly edging towards me. And what I want to do today is take you on a journey and I've got a wonderful classic book summary, one that's been around for a while, but I think one that impacts each and every one of us, as well as our children, more so now than ever before. The book is entitled Affluenza, Affluenza, and what a catchy and what a clever title that book has. And the author, there's three authors, there's Don, John, De Graff, David, uh, David Wan, and Tom Naylor. They all contributed to this book, Affluenza, and I think it's been around for a while, I'm not sure, but uh, it's certainly uh, not a, a new book, but a, a book that's been around for quite a while. And Affluenza, Affluenza is all about our, our, um, our spending habits, and Affluenza, <coughs> is described as a painful, contagious, society-transmitted condition of overload, debt, and anxiety, and waste resulting from the dogged pursuit of having more. So what a way to start a uh, Tuesday here in Sydney with uh, a book entitled Affluenza. So let me just pop on board here and we'll uh, continue our walk and talk. I've got training today, so I won't be going to work, so I'll be able to pump out a few book summaries. So affluenza has been described as our insatiable need to just buy, 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 and just have more, more, more. So the author asks a valid question. Now, when was the last time you bought something? But more importantly, when was the last time you bought something that you didn't need? Uh, the things which are called non-essentials. And the author then goes on to talk about the fact that these non-essentials uh, are things that you don't need. You just buy on, on the whim, but they give you a false sense that it will make you happy. And we all fall into this trap that we simply accumulate stuff. But what happens is that the accumulation of this stuff over time just gets in the way of the things that matter in our lives. The author then goes on to say that uh, for those of us, and I guess we all fall into this category, if you're purchasing stuff to be happy, uh, you are trying, basically you're trying to cover up your misery and uh, you're not only trying to cover it up but in fact the author goes on to say here that we're actually making it worse because what we've learnt over life is that uh, whatever you go, whatever you get, whatever you accumulate sooner or later the novelty wears off you know, the new phone, the, the new mistress, the new lover, the new car, before you know it, as we said, the novelty, the novelty wears off. I had an uncle of mine in Greece uh, who a few years ago we were chatting about this sort of topic. I was talk to, talking to him about a, another friend of mine. This who had uh, left his wife for a young, attractive mistress. And he said some very, very wise words to me. And those wise words were, why would you leave your wife? Why would you leave your family? Why would you um, bring uh, torment, torment and shame to so many people just 
for a mistress, just for a gomena, he said. Because in his words, and I, I often laugh when I think about it, you know, after you have sex a half dozen times, you're going to get sick of her. You're going to get sick of her. She's going to get sick of you. So you're ending up ruining so many lives and causing so much grief for somebody who you're not going to have much in common with, you know, in a month's time. And, you know, he's a man who in Greece, he was, uh, I guess, quite worldly. He's seen quite a bit in his time. And I, I always take his advice as being uh, quite relevant, given that he's older than me and uh, he's, uh, he's lived his life as well. So the, the bottom line, the point that he made to me and the point that the author makes to us is that the new phone, the new mistress, uh, the new distraction in our lives is but a novelty which will quickly wear off. Now, admittedly, there's an exhilaration at first, but it's only momentary satisfaction. And uh, we get a dopamine hit, we get all the pleasure hormones, you know, they say the things that we want to hear, um, you know, the new phone's got the bells and whistles, the new car looks shiny, and people look at us and see us differently for a moment. But uh, before you know it, um, you're sitting behind the wheel and it has no, <laughs> no different feeling to the car that you had before because uh, on the inside of the car, you know, all cars are the same. It's only the outside that, uh, that people get to see and uh, admire. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a valid point. It's a really powerful point that the novelty, the exhilaration, the smell of the new leather eventually uh, disappears and the excitement of the new lover also evaporates very, very quickly. And the author also says is, the more things you accumulate in life, be it cars, phones, postcodes, um, girlfriends, lovers, uh, the harder you have to work. And the harder you have to work and the longer you have to work means that you've got less and less time to enjoy those things. You know, who needs a, a, a house with a garage full of uh, you know, prestige cars when you can't get on the road and go for a long, wonderful drive whenever you want with whoever you want? You know, if we're working all the time, then uh, what's, the, what's the use of having the beautiful mansion uh, on the harbour or having the car, the garages full of cars and toys abound when you're at work all the time? <laughs> you never get to experience your house. You never get to, uh, to what's the word I'm looking for, um, entertain. You know, when was the last time we ever went anywhere and got entertained at homes these days. People always go out to get entertained. So, uh, the, uh, the author there says that what's happening is that people are getting sucked into this, uh, this spending spree and then they're too tired, they're too overwhelmed, too overloaded to enjoy it and they spend more time cocooning and just sitting inside and just relaxing because they're too tired to socialize, they're too tired to go for a drive, they're too tired to do all these things. And as I said, they, they waste their, their lives on the, uh, the couches of these big, beautiful homes. So the author then calls us to action and says that we need to break the cycle of things and spend more, spend more time with people and in nature and uh, to buy less things because buying less and spending less and consuming less actually makes us happier. 
know, by cutting consumption, you actually are happier, according to studies that they've done. Because the trick is to buy less and get more out of what you've got. In Seattle, the author gave examples that uh, there are very, very small apartments that are very, very popular with uh, young couples and they're called abodements. And they're apartments which are so small that they force the occupants to get out and about to make, uh, to make their lives more interesting and happier. They need to socialize. And the other thing that makes things even worse these days is we've got online shopping. So you don't even have to go shopping. You don't have to get out and about and be with people and still bloody fill your, uh, your house up with stuff. You know, this whole shopping from bloody online. You know, I've heard of people <laughs> who buy their groceries online, who do everything online and nothing could be lazier. You know, to, to, to buy things online and have them delivered to your door means that there are some people who can spend their whole time just doing nothing, just being uh, couch potatoes, which is frightening, frightening to say the least. It's okay to, uh, to do it if you're uh, very, very busy and you do it from, for productivity. But if you're doing it because you're just damn lazy, that's scary, that's absolutely scary. So uh, what's happening now though, is that we need to uh, educate uh, ourselves, our children, and the people around us about the, uh, the media tactics and uh, what, it, what media does, what advertising does to suck us in to affluenza. Because the, there is a massive influence that advertising has on us. And uh, by educating our children and ourselves, that's the immunization that we need against the affluenza virus. Because everywhere you look, everywhere you look on social media, on billboards, you name it, there, are, there is messaging, subliminal messaging out there, which is continually trying to influence us to spend, 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 and to buy things that we don't bloody need. Children are influenced by cartoons, by media. Uh, they spend at least 50 hours a week on electronic media and they're uh, subject to, uh, to influence everywhere they look. So it's all about building and generating media literacy and to teach people how they're being manipulated and to at least get us to a point where we can start fighting this affluenza virus that is infecting us left, right and centre. So thanks very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's a bit cold this morning, but uh, I'll come to you again a few times throughout the day because I need to pump out at least five vlogs. And I love pumping out five vlogs or more. So uh, don't get me wrong. So uh, we'll come again. Take care. Yasas. Bye for now. Filakia. And let's learn to live with less and make the most of what we've got. Take care. Bye-bye.